Alright fellas, now it's been a couple days since what I would call one of the most controversial boxing matches of the last decade. I don't think I've seen this passion of a reaction to about in years. Now that the dust has somewhat settled, there's one thing that is still kinda annoying me. That being Jake Paul calling himself the face of boxing. This has been such a central part of his whole fight build up, claiming that once he defeats Iron Mike Tyson that he will capture the throne and become the face of the sport. Even in Jake Paul's promotion of the fight, they used my voice out of context saying the face of boxing in their segment talking about how Jake is set to capture the title. So I think it's only fair that we talk about why exactly Jake Paul is actually the face of nothing, although he might try to convince you otherwise. And just before that, if you love everything boxing, you found yourself in the right place. I'm Cloister and I make boxing videos to help keep you in the loop, so make sure to subscribe to always stay informed. Now I'm sure you've seen everything that went down the other day. Day. It was one of the worst and sad matchups in boxing history. It's one of those things, although it might have been a financial success for Netflix, I think it was a bit of a PR disaster afterwards, and it's been fascinating to see the fallout. The initial plan, as I've said before, was to make Jake Paul the most hated man in combat sports again, and I reckon they originally thought, if Tyson gives a good show and Paul beats him, it will achieve exactly that with little controversy surrounding Tyson's age which of course was the most criticised thing prior. Jake for a while has been claiming that he's either one of the faces or the new face of the sport. It's one of those things where he reckons if he claims it long enough, people will actually start to believe it, and in turn he'll be able to demand even more money. Although he was claiming he was the face of boxing without ever really versing an actual boxer. This fight with Tyson though was seen as his promotional duel to be able to secure this title. Jake's last year since the Fury fight, let's be honest, has been lackluster, and they obviously had to do something big to remain in people's mouths. Yet, as you already know, it kinda all went wrong. The whole lead up to the fight, it was rumoured that Jake was going to call out Canelo after the fight, and then he would get this big fight against who was truly the face of boxing. Although after what many would consider to be a disgrace, not even Paul could bring himself to call out Canelo by name, almost shrugging off Helwani's questions about it. He's not stupid, he knows how embarrassing it would be to call out the true face of the sport after what just occurred. What I find kinda interesting is the fallout from the fight where they're trying to justify this whole facade while defending Jake's position. As I've said before, it was a financial success and they're certainly running with it. Between Tyson coming back and the card being on Netflix, it was set to be seen by a lot of eyes. I would refute though, as I said before, really at the bottom line of this success, it didn't really have a ton to do with Jake Paul. He was almost the bonus, like remember this guy that you don't like, well he might get his head caved in, and it was just a slight incentive to watch the event. So since the fight, they've really taken two major angles to try and defend it. The first being, well Mike Tyson's a legend, how dare you criticise him getting in the ring. I think it's impressive from Tyson to have the courage to get back in the ring. Yet after MVP promotions, the company which organised this event, and is part owned by Paul, convinced us all Tyson was in shape just for him to be a shadow of himself and left a real bad taste in my mouth. Like someone had to know in the MVP team, or in some team in charge of the fight, that Tyson truly wasn't in shape, and knew what was really going to happen. But they ignored it, and now they have to take this positive angle to try and defuse the backlash of, well, Tyson's a legend, how dare you criticise him getting back in the ring. This was a fight which was meant to legitimise Paul's boxing ability with little risk, and it almost did the exact opposite. Between these two excuses, it enables Paul to go, well, I just first a legend and it did great commercially, that makes me the face of the sport. The other big angle they're using to defend Jake's position, which I find fascinating, is their strategy to claim that Jake Paul is a good force for the sport. Now let's be honest, Jake Paul's public image at one point was that bad to the boxing community that they had to do some Mr. Beast style appeals to be like, look, he's, he's He's not that bad. Trust us, maybe? One way is of course the talk about him being the driving force in women's boxing. It was fantastic that Taylor Serrano was seen by so many eyes, but I don't think Paul's a great driver for the women's sport as a whole. Like any promoter, he cares about his fighters and his fighters only. He's put Serrano in great positions, but he's not revolutionising the women's side of the sport. Serrano really is almost his human shield. Jake has attached himself to the growing women's boxing movement and appointed himself its saviour, to stop anybody from peeking behind the curtain of his claims of being an actual boxer. There are several pioneers who have previously put women's boxing on the forefront, yet he wants to claim he's the saviour in what seems like, from all I've seen, in a move that's just basically for positive PR. Yes, he did get Taylor and Serrano a record payday, but wanting to claim that you're basically God's given saviour for the sport instead of giving props to the women who actually made the sport? 
is simply disrespectful. Talking about fighter pay, you could go on about how he's an apparent advocate for fighter pay. Another case of all talk, little action. He cares so much about fighter pay, he went to tell one of the best young prospects of the sport in his last press conference, in his words, that the time I spend taking her is how much you make in your whole life. That's a bloke who really cares for the young stars of the sport, isn't it? All because Carrington wanted to back Tyson who grew up in the same area as him. Then there's his charity, and I'm not going to talk about that. But with a lot of celebrities, it's the typical thing of, well, I can't do anything bad because, you know, look, I do charity work. At least at the end of the day, some kids might be getting some vague benefit out of it. Jake Paul is basically feathering his own nest. So he has insurance that if the backlash is that bad, that he can whip out his Uno reverse card. And go, wait guys, don't complain because look, I'm this moral saviour to the sport. I'm the face of boxing. But I'll let you guys decide if he actually is. From this point on, I would be surprised if Paul didn't basically go silent for the next few months. This fight, although a financial success, has left a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths. So to avoid his next fight being a disaster, I assume he'll go into hiding until this all blows over and people kind of forget. I fear what's for the future, because what I predicted in my last video seems like it might scarily come true. Although, I expect him to basically go into hiding until they can find another big name they can attach Paul's name to, who is either a shell of themselves or not a boxer, so they can repeat this whole circus. But that's his business, isn't it? He's an entertainer who's cosplaying as an elite professional boxer, and I'm sure we'll be all set to see it again in, say, six months' time. But in conclusion, Jake Paul doesn't run the sport, and isn't near to being the face of it either. Who truly runs the sport? Well, it's the boxers and trainers who give their life to the sport. And for him to act like this saviour is simply disrespectful to a sport which apparently saved his life. But now, I want to hear after a few days, what are your thoughts on what just went down? And do you think Jake is truly running the sport like he claims? Leave all your thoughts down below. Yet, yeah, thanks for watching fellas, and I'll catch you in the next one.